This is a very different kind of Vauxhall insignia. In second generation form, hatch versions of this car gain grand sport billing, but more importantly, they also get a much more upmarket demeanor with greater class, refinement, and sophistication. Handling's more agile too, thanks in large part to the considerable weight reductions this Mark II model can offer. Savings made all the more impressive, bearing in mind how much bigger this car is than its predecessor. Add in extremely competitive pricing, and there are all the ingredients for a rejuvenated product. On the move, this insignia feels like the bigger car. It's now become uh, the suspension floating you over broken surfaces that would have troubled and impeded the previous model. Now, importantly, this second generation model is 175 kilos lighter than its predecessor, and that really shows when you're cornering at speed, where there's less body roll than before, and generally there's a much higher level of agility. As for engines, well, most buyers will continue to want a diesel, uh, with the majority of sales likely to go to the 1.6-litre Turbo D unit that we're trying here, offered with either 110 or 136 PS. Now, it's the Pokia variant we're testing in this case, and that's a car capable of 65.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 114 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you trade up to the 170 PS 2 litre diesel, uh, efficiency drops off markedly, although there is a compensation of uh, 400 newton metres of pulling power, and that's a figure that will be improved even further if you go for the 210 PS by turbo variant. Engine-wise, you'll find uh, much more that's really different if you turn your attention to petrol power, with both units on offer being completely new. Small capacity turbocharged engines that use unleaded are very much in vogue at the moment, and the 1.5 litre unit supplied here uh, should suit that trend, uh, offered with either 140 or 165 PS. Further up the range uh, sits a potent 260 PS 2 litre petrol turbo model that showcases both of what are arguably the two most significant engineering developments introduced with this second generation insignia. Uh, one is the super slick 8 speed auto gearbox that's optional on the lesser models, and the other is a sophisticated new intelligent all wheel drive system. Now this uses a state-of-the-art rear torque vectoring system for greater cornering traction and sharper turning. Well, that'd be nice to have, but it isn't really relevant for typical bars of this model, so let's finish by summarizing the key things that you need to know. This insignia now easily matches class-leading Passat and Mondeo models in terms of refinement and drive dynamics. And it's now got pretty much all the technical sophistication that you get from a German premium brand model in this segment too. So as a result, you would not only like one of these, but you might also conceivably want one, which for Vauxhall in this part of the segment has to be a big step forward. You might not previously have perceived the idea of running a large Vauxhall as being in any way aspirational. Well, perhaps you need to think again. Now, this one might still campaign in much the same market segment as its predecessor, but it has moved up a class in almost any way you care to name, most particularly in style and size. In profile, uh, you better appreciate the changes made to the size of this car, a 55 millimeter increase in length uh, that's enough to take this Vauxhall from being one of the smaller offerings in the D segment to being the very largest car of this car, and you can now choose. Time to take a seat inside where there is an enormous improvement over what was served up by the previous insignia. A fit and finish is almost a match for the premium brands and in the instrument binnacle most models get this smart and configurable 4.2 inch colour screen. Now, anything that can't tell you will almost certainly be found on this Center Dash IntelliLink infotainment monitor, seven or eight inches in size and equipped with the usual DAB stereo, Bluetooth phone and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto phone connectivity features. If you also include the optional satellite navigation system, you'll be better set up to use this car's other key technical innovation, the OnStar Personal Connectivity and Service Assistant. Now, this includes a vehicle tracking system in case of theft. Uh, it creates in your insignia an in-car Wi-Fi hotspot, and it'll allow you to monitor key vehicle information via a downloadable MyVoxel smartphone app. OnStar will also automatically alert the emergency services if the airbags deploy. And if you press the system's blue button on the roof here, uh, you'll be connected through to an operator who can find just about any information you might need throughout your journey. Connecting to OnStar. 
Hello, uh, can you tell me where the nearest McDonald's is, please? If navigation's been specified, then the OnStar representative will download any directions you need directly into the IntelliLink SatNav system. So, time to check out another area of this car that might really sell it to you, the back seat. Once inside, you uh, really notice the benefit of this second generation model's extra 92 millimetres of wheelbase. Now, as you'd expect from a car that's now nearly five metres in length, so nearly as long as an enormous Audi Q7 SUV, uh, there's plenty of room for one really tall adult to sit behind another. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now, uh, capacity has dropped a little over the previous generation model, but the 490 litre total is still more than you get in a premium branded model in this segment. Uh, and uh, Vauxhall claims, absolutely correctly, that the uh, space you get is more usable because uh, there's a squarer opening aperture and a lower loading sill. Uh, push forward. The rear bench, uh, which comes with a useful 40 20 40 split here, and 1450 litres of fresh air can be freed up. Now, if you need that kind of flexibility on a regular basis, the Sports Tourer Estate body style will appeal, and that variant offers a 560 litre boot that's extendable to 1665 litres. It's time to change the way you think about Vauxhall's Insignia. This second generation version is one of the most improved cars we've ever tested. And that's thanks to a whole raft of changes that have enhanced everything from styling to technology. Now Vauxhall proved with the previous generation Insignia that it could make a mediocre model into a bestseller. Which means that this time around, well, the Mondeo sector medium range rivals are going to find it very difficult to beat indeed.